Okay, so in this video I'm going to be covering my thoughts and impressions on the FreeSky Tyrannus x Lite radio after using it for about a week and probably doing about uh, about 50-60 flights on this. I'll first cover the positives and then I'll cover the negatives first of all. Um, in terms of ergonomics and the way it feels in the hands, it feels very nice. Um, actually feels even better than the Turnigy Evolution smaller than the Evolution, it's actually lighter than the Evolution, it doesn't have that extra screen up top here, so, um, and of course the antenna is internal. So in terms of overall feel, the weight, everything feels really nice. The gimbals themselves are very, very smooth, and of course they're hall sensor gimbals, so um, very accurate, and almost no jitter whatsoever. And in terms of um, the tension, that's a negative, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, the rest of the, 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 the way the uh, radio feels, the switches feel really nice. You know, you get um, two, two position switches in the back here, and then two, three position switches up top. You get these dials here, they're fine. I don't use them. Uh, I think the number of switches is fine. I don't think uh, any more or I don't think any, any more are needed. It's perfectly uh, the perfect number for uh, mini quad uh, flyers. The interface is totally fine as well. Of course, it's got the same on-off button that the QX7 has, where you have to Welcome hold down to the. Open TX. You got to hold. Warning. You got to hold down the button there to uh, actually power it on and off, which for some people can be a little bit annoying. Um, but in terms of the interface, the software, the Open TX is on here. Everything is totally um, fine. If you want to update to the newest firmware version, I have a, a video on how to do that using the firmware from the um, FreeSky website. I'll put a card in the corner to that video if you want to learn how to do the upgrade yourself. I would recommend doing that just to get the latest updates to make sure that your firmware is working properly. But in terms of the OpenTX on here, very familiar, works the same way as it does on pretty much all the other FreeSky products. The interface here is a little bit different. Um, I'm not going to go into all that stuff because all that stuff is in a lot of other videos and has already been covered. Uh, suffice it to say, it's, it's, easy, it's easy enough to figure out how to use the interface and, and get around. Um, using these buttons and the, the dials here. So uh, in terms of usability, I have no complaints about that. Everything here works great. In terms of the the soft touch plastic that's on, on here now, I don't have the red one, this is the black one. I'm assuming the red one has got a similar feel in terms of the, the plastic on the front here and also uh, this material here in the back. Now this rubber gripping material is fine. I think that'll hold up over time. I think this material here in the front, this soft touch plastic, might be might break down over time, especially if you have oily hands or if your hands are kind of greasy. Uh, I noticed that I don't particularly have oily hands, but I I would notice that sometimes my, my hands would get sweaty, and you would it would uh, leave oils on this plastic here. And I think that over time, uh, this will start to degrade and start getting sticky or gooey. I've seen that on a lot of other. Um, other, pla uh, other kinds of plastic that has this kind of soft touch feel on it. Uh, after about a year and, and of use, the, this breaks down, this material breaks down, and you, you, it tends to get kind of sticky. So, you know, you may want to get one of those, like, vinyl sticker kits or something like that to, um, you know, cover up this, this front face here just to protect it. I think there's uh, uh, some skin kits that are coming out, or they're already out for that. I may be doing that for this at some point in the future. Now in terms of the range and um, the transmission, of course you could add an external antenna in there. There's lots of videos on people adding external antennas, but I found that the internal antennas are totally fine. I think there's just, I think there's two. I'm not 100% sure that I didn't open it up. Um, I have no issues with range at all. I've had no fail-safes, and it seems like my RSSI values are about the same as uh, with any other trans like the QX7. So. Um, Unless you're kind of be going really far, I wouldn't worry too much about this. This is totally fine for uh, probably at least 500 meters. I haven't had any uh, issues going at least 300 meters away with this. So if you're worried about range, don't worry about that. I've had no problems with that with this particular model. Okay, so a couple of the negatives that I want to point out. Um, it doesn't come with a micro SD card. Uh, you don't really need a really big one. They're kind of cheap, so that's not that big of a downside. Now, the battery, though, is not included. So let me... Uh, turn this off. So you need two batteries to go into the, the grips here and you just twist the cap off like this. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to actually get these on and off. 
Okay. So you, you got to take the battery out by taking these caps off. There's one on each side. And the battery that I'm using are these, these it's kind of an odd size, 18500. I uh, picked these up at Amazon. You can get these. Um, uh, I bought a pack of four, so I have two in the radio and two that are charged as uh, spears ready to go if I need to um, swap the batteries up. And I found that with these two that are in here, fully charged after a week, and my voltage went from like 8.4 to like 7. Point, I think I'm at 7.8 now. So probably about I could probably go about two weeks on the on a full charge. So probably you could be you could be totally fine with just getting a, a set of two instead of a set of four, but it wasn't that much more to get a set of four. Um, you know, I had my own charger that I was using, so and I, you can get the two pack with the charger or the four pack without the charger. I think the four pack without the charger was like thirteen dollars, so not too expensive, but would have been nice if they included these batteries. And it's a, it is an odd size because not a lot of places don't sell that, but uh, I'll put a link in the description to the. Amazon link that you can pick up these batteries if you need them. Okay, another uh, thing that's kind of a downside is the uh, sticks. The stick height is a little bit on the short side for me. Uh, I did extend them all the way. You do that by uh, using a little Allen key to uh, loosen up that Allen key on the inside of this hole, and then you can then raise up by uh, unscrewing this uh, stick end here counterclockwise, and then then retightening that little Allen key, little Allen screw inside there. This is about the maximum height that I was able to get, and I think it's still a little bit too short for me, so I'm hoping that there will be some aftermarket or third-party stick ends that will come out that are going to be a little bit taller. I think I need just maybe another three or four millimeters in terms of getting the, the correct feel for me in terms of the throws. Um, yeah, it's just a little bit... It's a little bit short for me. I think some people will, will be fine with this. Uh, for me, I just I prefer a little bit of a longer uh, stick. The gimbals, of course, are smaller. So uh, if you compare this gimbal size to the size of the gimbal on the uh, uh, the uh, QX7, for example, uh, the one with the hall sensor gimbal, it's quite a bit. That, that one's quite a bit larger than this one. This one's quite a bit smaller. So and also the the way that the gimbal works is different. I think this one's a PWM single instead of an analog single on the other. Other gimbal, so in some sense it's more accurate because it is using PWM, but in another sense it is it's less accurate because the, the throws are are smaller. So I've heard that people that uh, do racing that don't need large throws and will actually prefer this because they're just moving the sticks in very minute amounts versus freestyle flyers tend to use full stick deflections more often, and that's where I think. This this radio has has me in trouble because um, while you can adjust the tension on the throttle here we're using the little screws in the back, the tension overall on, for example, yaw here on the left and then pitch and roll is not adjustable. So you can open up the radio and, and maybe swap out the springs, which I mean I wouldn't have any idea where to get those kind of springs to adjust the tension. The tension is completely fixed here. I think you can adjust the tension on some of the other Tyrannuses. Like the QX7, um, I have been flying the jumper radio for so long, almost four or five months now, that I've gotten very used to the loose feel of those sticks compared to the way the Tyrannus felt. And you know, it's this is more like a traditional Tyrannus in terms of the uh, the tension of the stick, the amount of force you need to make the deflections when you're when you're flying, and and the, and the amount of force you need to make a full stick deflection. So. In a lot of ways, in, in, in terms of my flying the last week, uh, I think my flying has gone backwards quite a bit because I'm just not having, just not have gotten used to the way these sticks feel. They, I, my fingers, my thumbs here just don't want to uh, move the sticks uh, as much because I'm just so used to uh, such a loose uh, tension on the sticks now that I'm having a difficult time adjusting to that. So I'm a little bit concerned about that, that this might not be the radio for me long term because of the inability to adjust the stick tension so if you're you know if you need someone if you're if you're a flyer that wants to have the ability to adjust your tension on the sticks you're gonna have some issues with one if you don't like the the stock default tension on the gimbals so you ought to keep that in mind if you're thinking about buying this um, you can't change the tension unless you actually swap the springs out for alternate springs and Maybe they might come out someday for that, or someone might know where to get, pick up some of those, but I have no idea, and opening this up and swapping out all those strings doesn't seem like a very particularly easy job 
So I'm not sure if I'll be using this as my daily driver for a whole lot longer because uh, a new jumper radio is coming out. It's called the T12 and I'll be testing it out pretty soon. I think it's coming in a few days. So after about a week of using this, I still have not gotten used to the tension. So where I feel comfortable uh, flying my normal, you know, acro moves and such on a daily basis. But I'm going to, you know, continue to use this uh, off and on probably for the next few months. Hopefully I can get used to the tension and improve my flying with this. But right now I can report that after a week, um, not too happy with the way the sticks feel and uh, the way it allows me to do my flying on a daily basis. Okay, so that's going to do it for my one week review of the x Light radio. I uh, hope you found this helpful. You know, obviously, uh, a lot, you know, the way th these radios feel in the hands and the way uh, the sticks feel in your thumbs is very subjective. So I highly encourage you to find a friend who has this and give it a try yourself uh, because uh, ultimately, you know, you, you can go by anyone's opinions out there and the only one that really matters is your own and whether or not you're going to actually like the way it feels. I can, all I can do is report my experience and, um, you know, based on this compared to some other radios I've used. And that, that's all I can do in terms of reporting that to you guys. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you did, let me know. Leave a comment below. Give me a thumbs up and share this video. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.